Hi, welcome to the series of videos on solids. Um, this is the first video that's going to be an introduction to solids. This is all in chapter 12 of your book. Um, this first video is going to be based out of 12.1 and 12.2 in the book. Um, but just a note, your textbook goes more in depth on quite a few topics in this chapter than is required by the AP curriculum, some of which we will talk about in the videos, uh, some of which we won't be covering until after the AP test. So with solids, they can be hard, like diamond, or they can be soft, like paraffin wax. Some solids readily conduct, others do not. Um, some solids can be easily manipulated and bent and folded, while others are brittle and will break. Um, the physical properties really are dictated by the types of bonds that um, form between the atoms, and the solids are actually classified according to these bonds. And so, classifying solids based on bonds. We have four different types that we're going to be looking at in this series of videos. The first are metallic solids. So metallic solids have a sea of electrons. This is what allows conductivity, um, and metallic solids are strong without being brittle. So these metallic solids just have these sea of collectively shared electrons um, within the, the crystal structure. Um, ionic solids are very different from metallic. Um, they're held together by the electrostatic attraction between cations and anions. Um, and ionic solids do not conduct, um, and they are very brittle. So if you try to bend it, it's going to break. And then we have covalent network solids. Um, they're held together by um, an extensive network of covalent bonds. And this type of bonding can result in materials that are extremely hard, like diamond. Um, and it's responsible for semiconductors that we're going to be looking at in that video. And then finally, we have the molecular solids. Um, and these molecular solids are molecules that are simply held together by weak intermolecular forces. Um, and because these forces are weak, uh, molecular solids tend to be soft and have fairly low melting points. So this shows each of the four. We have metallic solids, which have the sea of electrons. We have ionic solids, which have your cations and your anions held together by ionic bonds. We have the covalent network solids, um, which are just these extensive networks um, that are all covalent bonds. And we have the molecular solids that are simply held together by some intermolecular force, whether it's dispersion or even hydrogen bonding. Um, two other types of solids that we're not going to get um, into much detail with are polymers and nanomaterials. So polymers, they are long chains of atoms that are connected by covalent bonds. Um, they don't really fall neatly into any of, any of the other solid categories. Um, and it's because the chains can be connected um, by some of the weaker intermolecular forces, but typically polymers are pretty strong and they have pretty high melting points um, and they're more flexible than metallic or ionic or covalent solids. Um, so they, even though they're held together by intermolecular forces, they have some unique properties um, that we'll talk a lot more about when we get to organic chemistry. Um, and then we have nanomaterials. Um, and nanomaterials are simply um, crystalline compounds that are orders of magnitude smaller than other solids. Um, and so this gives them very different properties from larger crystalline materials. Um, one example of a nanomaterial are carbon nanotubes. Um, carbon nanotubes are very unique. Um, they are extremely strong. They're stronger than steel. Um, and so this is actually what has caused scientists to start to explore options um, for carbon-based electronics. And so polymers typically fall into the organic chemistry realm. Nanomaterials would fall under the um, nanotechnology field. So the way that solids are classified has to do with how um, their atoms are arranged. And so we have either crystalline or amorphous solids. So if we have a regular repeating pattern of atoms, these are crystalline. Um, amorphous solids have a lack of order in the arrangement of the atoms. So since the crystalline solids have a much more regular pattern that are easier to study, those are actually what are of more interest to most chemists. So with crystalline solids, 
Um, in a crystal, so crystal lattice, particles are highly ordered. Um, an example might be um, iron pyrite, which is fool's gold, um, sodium chloride, or diamond. Right. So there's a small repeating unit in a crystalline solid um, that's called a unit cell, um, and the structure of the unit cell actually um, defines a lot of, of the properties. So we have cri this crystalline solid that has a unit cell. Um, so the structure of the solid is defined by the size and the shape of the unit cell um, and really where they're at within the unit cell. Now if you actually um, read in 12.2 of your book it goes into um, cubic centered, um, face centered, and we're not going to go into all of the, the actual arrangements um, we're going to keep it a little more general. So then we have the amorphous solids. And in the amorphous solids, there is really no particular order in the arrangement. Um, so really, the structures are similar to those of liquids, but the particles lack the freedom of motion. So all of the particles are held in place, um, but there's really no structure. Um, some examples are rubber or glass. Um, they have no particular order in how they're arranged, um, so they really lack the order that is necessary for a crystalline solid. So with types of bonding, we have molecular. Okay, um, this shows the uh, form of the particles, the forces between, some properties and some examples. Um, each of the following videos is going to go into um, these much more um, in much more detail, but this is probably a very nice table. It'd probably be useful to have somewhere in your notes. Um, but this shows the molecular, the covalent network, the ionic, and the metallic bonding um, in the crystalline solids. So this is a very good summary table on each of the types of solids.